I would like to welcome you to another video on Microsoft Access. But today what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about operators and expressions. And I'm going to use a query to show the, the way that you can use operators and expressions in your querying so that you can get better, uh, better results, more, more succinct results than you would if you took any field that you wanted. This, these end up going in the criteria of your query and in going into the criteria you can have a great amount of flexibility with these operators and let me show you what I'm talking about here as I go up here what happens if I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and create a query so I'm going to go to query design right here and in going to query design I'm going to choose uh, the customers table and I'm going to choose the sales table and the line items and the product table. Okay, notice that there are already links established here. Uh, remember when we set links over here in the database tools on the relationships tab here, that those relationships come through to the other queries and such that you set up. So, so those uh, relationships are coming from here. And so you can see how they're uh, linked together. So I can see data all the way from customers to sales and on through to product, okay? So in setting up the query, what I want to do is start working with the query line. And, and I'm going to go ahead and put company in here. I'm going to put state in here. I'm going to put the category. I'm sure it's a product category. There it is. Okay. And the next one we want is the sales date. So that would be in the line item header, probably. Nope, there it is. The sale date is in the table sales. And the description, that's probably a description over here of the product. And then the cost of the product. Okay, so with those fields, what I want to do is start playing around with, um, let's say I want all the sales that happened in California or Arizona. So the way I use the operator there is if it's in California, it's going to show me the data. If it's in Arizona, it's also going to show me the data. That's the purpose of the OR command is I want it in California or Arizona. Okay. I'm also going to come over here and I don't want cars in my, um, in my return turn of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a less than, greater than, and I'm going to type in cars. And when I tab out of it, notice it puts the quotes around for me. Uh, if you want to be more precise, you can go ahead and put the quotes on. But a lot of times it'll fix those quotes. What I find if, if I try to put in the quotes, sometimes I'll forget to put the first one in and put the second one in. And then it'll give you all kinds of goofy errors that you got to figure out. So I tend to just put them in without putting the quotes around them. What I want to do is see what the data is going to bring back. So here we have three vehicles from California, one vehicle from Arizona, and um, all the categories shows that two of them are special interest and two of them are trucks. Okay, so we're able to exclude all of the car sales. So, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the design view here. And, and let's show another way to do this. Let's go ahead and go like this, but I'm going to put a Arizona down here, okay? And then I'm going to go just copy this and put that down there. Now, what you'll notice is as I run this, it'll be the exact same result. So what happens here is there's two different ways to do this. Notice this is your main criteria line, this first one. But the OR line is just under it. And so with the OR line directly under it, I can put them on two separate lines. Now, if I want the criteria to be the same for California and Arizona, in other words, I don't want cars in any part of my query. If I use the OR line to split them up like this, I have to put the same criteria on the two different lines. So a lot of times the way I did it the first, the first way that I did it tends to be more, uh, more a little bit more efficient, okay? Now there's some wildcard operators that I'd like to show you now. So I'm going to just get rid of, rid of these here. And what I want to do is show you an operator. So what I'm going to do is go over here and I want company and I, I want the notes. So 
the notes in one of these ah there it is notes here now i want notes and i want to put the notes over here i don't want state right now and i don't care about category um i do want note i like to know when the sale date was i'm going to take cost out of there okay so what I want to do is I want to look in the notes and I want to look for cars that are red. Now, knowing what's in the notes, I have sometimes that the, the, the color red is followed by a comma and sometimes the color red is followed by an exclamation point. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and look for anything like... And I'm going to put star for my wild card here, okay? And then red. And then what I want to do is I want to have two different wild cards. So I'm going to open it up with a bracket here. And in that bracket, I can put a string of different characters that I want to follow the, the term red. And I want the ones that have commas and period and exclamation point. And then I'm going to close it by another star, which is my wildcard, anything after those. So I'm, I'm looking for a something that's red that has a comma, a period, or exclamation point, and then anything after that. Okay, so I'm going to tab out of that, and you need to, okay, it's not going to let me just get away with it putting the quotes in there, so I'm going to have to put the quotes in. So when I tab out, now it doesn't complain about it, and I can go ahead and see what this result gives me. So let's expand those notes and see what we've got here, okay? So we've got red with a comma, as long as it's red with an exclamation point, and red with a comma. So we found red in two different kinds of conditions. Now, we could have also got the same result by, by not having the brackets afterwards and just putting a star at that point. And let me show you that option. But I wanted to show you what you could do with with brackets and different wildcards, okay? So we could go there and we get red with a comma, exclamation points, and we got red with a space, okay? So we were looking for commas and periods and exclamation points and not a space. So be, this time we get the the uh, these three that uh, that have a space after the red. So the star gives us a little bit broader results. And notice that in brackets, you can create a situation where you have much more restricted results by using the wild cards. So let's, let's look at another case. So what I want to do with this one is I want company, I want the state, and I want the sale date. And I'm going to put it in those, in these, in that order, get rid of description. And I'm going to get rid of the notes for now. Don't need that anymore for this demo. So what I want to do here is realize that I can put um, a az comma um, az not a comma. Leave the comma out, okay? Or California or New York. Notice it put the quotation marks in for me, and I'm looking for three different states and when i run it okay all the ors allow me to get 35 records that have and you'll notice with the down arrow here i got arizona california and new york now i'm sure you're familiar with that down arrow if you've used excel at all what it does is it gives you a list of the things as long as the list is not too complex access will query it and give you a list of the items that you can select and and you can down select from here instead of going back to the query and uh, removing or, at, or removing other of these um, that way. So I can take New York out of this and just go back to California and Arizona if I want. But notice the filter icon is up here and I can toggle the filter and turn it off just as easily as that. Now let's look at another way to do this, okay? The, uh, one of the neat commands is an in command. So I can do in and then open parens and az and separate that with a comma, and California and New York, 
Okay, close that with a paren. And I, I don't know if it's going to complain to me about the quotation marks. Nope, it put the quotation marks in just fine. And we go and query it, and we get the same coming up here, 35 records. The in command is particularly useful when you don't want to do this long, huge string of or this, or that, or, or, or. So you can make a much more succinct and compressed list. And that comes in useful when you've got a long list of something because the criteria can only be 256 characters wide. And when I get into some very complex criteria, I can exceed that 256. So a lot of times I will look for abbreviations like the in command. Now what happens if I want to look at different dates? So I'm going to take I'm going to take this one and I'm going to get rid of state for now. And let's just look at a sale date range. I can do this manually and, and I'm going to show you the hard way to do it first. The hard way to do it is basically saying I want anything greater than or equal to a specific date. Dates are by their nature just numbers. And if if I have if I put in a number that says 10 slash 1 slash 2012, the first way it's going to interpret it is 10 divided by 1 divided by 2013 or 2012 or whatever. So you don't if you don't want your date to be treated like a, a subtraction problem if you use dashes or a division problem if you use slashes, you need to put the pound sign around it. And that tells Microsoft Access to specifically treat that as a date. So I'm going to put the pound in here and the, the date I can use is 10, 1, 20, 12. And, oh, I have to put that pound sign back in. And then I want to say less than or equal to and pound 331 2013. So what I have is a date range. Whoop, I did something invalid. I forgot to put my pound sign in there. So here what we want is anything greater than 10 1 of 2012 going up to 331 of 2013. So I want October, November, December, January, February, March. I want that six month period of sales. So during that six month period, let's see what it gives me. And I click go here. And here I have 11.5 starting out here all the way to 329. Okay. So I have everything hope between 10.1. Um, but not access, Microsoft Access has a neat tool. And they have a command that allows you to type between and the rest of it stays the same. So you can, instead of having to, oh, I have to take the equal greater than or equals to. So between this date and that date, okay? And I hit that and I get the same exact 30 records that I had before. Using the between command or using greater than or equal to uh, or less and less than or equal to in combination, I like to use the between command simply because the between command is kind of English to me. It, it makes logical sense and I can use it very, very easily. All right, for this next one, what I'd like to do is what there is in Access is a lot of, well, in any database, there's a lot of different values that can be in, in different fields. And one of those fields, one of those can be a null value. In other words, it's never been used. And then it could have a blank, meaning it has been used and somebody deleted it out of there. So what I want to do is here, look here to see what, see if I have null values here, okay? And so I can use the is null command. Notice I typed null and it put in the word is. It assumed I want to say is null. I could also use the converse of this and say anything that is not null. So what we're looking for here is notes. And so we're looking for places that don't have notes. So maybe you want to go in there and find those that the salespeople were lazy and in the uh, laziness of that salesperson, they never put notes in there. So you can go and find out who the salesperson is for these and go tell them that on those 74 records, we need some notes to tell us what the sale was about, especially the one that said too many toys several times. Obviously, that company is kind of strange anyway. So let's look at another uh, couple options. So 
Now, my situation is that if I don't have a customer who ordered a model by a particular th uh, type, if I don't have an order for this particular product, it's going to drop out of my data. So what I want to do is I want to delete these tables and just look at my products table to make sure that I get all of the query data that I need or want out of this particular one. And I want to look for a 1932 Ford Coupe. By the way, that was a sweet ride. And I'm looking for any car that's green and I want to look for cars. Okay, so now what have I done here? I've said in my criteria, basically, I'm looking for a 1932 model year that is a Ford, that is a coupe. Those have, all have to go together. So I'm not going to get, you know, f all Fords. I'm only going to get Fords that are 1932 and coupes. But coming over to color here, I've put that in or just below, in the line just below. And in that way, I've said, I want 1932 Ford coupes. And then I want all green cars. Because notice I don't have any other criteria over here. So this line is going to give me all green cars. And then all green. And then this line will give me category of all cars. Okay. So this one might not give too good of results. Because when I run it, I'm going to get all kinds of weird stuff. Okay. So I've got all cars in category. Okay. The color well, gosh, I'm getting red cars and yellow cars and gray cars, okay? And it uh, doesn't look like I'm getting very many 1932 Ford pickups or Ford coupes, okay? So that's kind of kind of strange, okay? So maybe that didn't quite give me what I want. Now, the category of cars came through really well, very, very well. I don't have any trucks or any special categories at all. And okay, so maybe what we want to do is, is is maybe we should straighten that up a little bit. Um, if we got rid of cars over here and got rid of the green here, what, what do we find our 1932 coupe? Yes, there was a 1932 Ford coupe that was green and and had cars. But did we get that result when we had green in here? and cars in here. Let's see. Let's see if we got a 19, yes, we got a 1932. And so we got a 1932 Ford Coupe Green and cars was the category. So we did find it, but it was in the midst of a whole bunch of other noise that didn't seem to help us very much, okay? You gotta be careful when you're putting the green and the cars in separate lines. If you want to look for just green Ford coupes. You need to put it on the same line there. Okay. Now, what I want to do now next is I'm going to go over here, and I want to have the same. Uh, I don't quite want to have the same li line up here. I want to to add those other um, items back here, and I want to query everything in Connecticut, and I want to come down um, down here and look at trucks for the category. And if I do this, what do I get? I get anything that's trucks in any state and anything that's in Connecticut that's any category. Okay, that might not quite be what I expected. So let's let's change this around and see the difference when we put tr get, I want trucks that are in Connecticut, okay? So let's we go there. And I only have one truck that's in Connecticut, okay? Now, what, ha what happens if I want to kind of mix these up? I can be very deliberate here and say I want cars from Connecticut. And let's say I want um, trucks from New York, okay? This gives us a nice succinct list of cars in Connecticut and one truck in particular that is in New York, okay? So basically the whole idea here is that you can use these operators to, to 
form your queries in such a way that the queries give you back the data that you want. Now, another thing I'd like to show you is that when you're in Query Design View, this builder up here allows you to get into this bunch of built-in functions, for example, and a lot of, the, we'll cover these functions later, but here you can look at it, the operators here, and you have all of your operators that you can use. Um, and when you click on it, it gives you an explanation up here of what, how it's used. And it gives you an example here. And so there's another example. Okay. So as, as you use each of these, you can then see some are arithmetic, some are comparisons, logical, Boolean type logical and string characters, which means you can concatenate two strings together. So maybe you want to, um, a lot of times I'll take a first name, last name, middle initial that are in separate fields in the database so that I have a good normal form, but I'll want it to pre be presented together. And, and I'll, I'll go Hanson and then put comma space in, in quotes, but I put an ampersand between each section of that in order to, to add it up and make it, um, make it viewable to a user. So there's all your operators and here's some common expressions like you can put in page numbers, total number of pages, page n of m which is number of pages in the total thing and what page you're on. You can put date and current date time in there too. So you've got some expressions as, that you can use as well. The builder up here is a good way to, uh, to get those things in and get a little coaching along the way and you can put that, those on any of these criteria lines. And a lot of times you can put them up here in, in your fields too to create fields like the first name, last name, middle name, initial type of uh, field where you can concatenate fields together, okay? You know, this has been a quick romp through the through criteria and expressions and operators. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel especially if you'd like to see other videos because I'll be making quite a few others uh, in the access line and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.